Hello and welcome to another all-action episode of Crash. 30 minutes worth of not just Crash, but Smash, Bash and Trash as well. Be it on four wheels or two, pedal power or turbo power, off-road and on it, there's plenty coming your way. The American Le Mans series is fast and exciting. That also means they don't have normal crashes. American Le Mans races can often last as long as 12 hours. And of course, the longer a car is on the track, then the more likely it is to end up going off it. The series also sees different types of sports cars on the circuit together. Some are a lot more powerful than others, and sometimes they don't mix so well. Across the Atlantic we go now, and some mishaps and mayhem from the British Motocross Championship. It's one of the biggest domestic off-road series on the planet, and often attracts appearances from big-name riders from the World Championship. Sometimes, though, you're not too big to suffer the most humiliating of tumbles. This is the start of one of the MX1 races, the most powerful class in the championship. And watch number 16, James Noble, who finds his machine just a touch too powerful. Down he goes. And he's now got a red face that matches the colour of his backside. Watch again as the gate drops. The rider turns on the power, but just a little too much in Noble's case, and he pays the price. Incidents such as that one in motocross are rare. The riders generally tend to crash during the race, and often they're quite spectacular, especially when you land on one of your fellow competitors. Keep your eyes on the second rider as he takes to the air, and instead of landing on the ground, he takes out one of his rivals. Thankfully, both men are OK. Staying with British Motocross, and this is the last lap of the race with title rival Stephen Sword on bike seven and Sean Simpson neck and neck. That is, until Simpson loses control on the bend. He remounts, but the damage is already done, and it's his rival who will take the chequered flag. Now this one is nasty. And it's not even the race, this is just a warm-up lap, and the only thing this rider is going to warm up is a hospital bed. It's back to the States and the American Le Mans series, and this is the world-famous Laguna Seca racetrack. Sometimes you can be driving along, minding your own business, trying to catch the guy in front when wallop. The bloke behind you gives you a nudge, and off you go. And then don't go. That car is going nowhere. Always expect the unexpected. Motorcycle road racing is dangerous. With no gravel traps and very few runoff areas, the probability of scenes like this increases. Watch the bike in the background and you just have to think he threw that on the deck because he knew he was going to hit the wall. And at what point do you think the cameraman says, I'm off? 
Northern Ireland and the Isle of Man are the last bastions of road racing. This is the Southern 100, and just a few moments before, everyday traffic such as cars and buses were using this road. Now it's a racetrack. We wait for the signal to go. And indeed, we're off. Guy Martin, Sloth, the blocks as Connor Cummins, Chris Palmer, and Martin Finnegan pull away. Donald is for. Guy Martin into Balabeg, and the Marshal still taking care of the aftermath of Ian Locker's fall, it would seem. As Martin tips it in. Oh, almost clips the Marshal. Oh, Riders off. Oh, that looks nasty. Flames everywhere. Huge impact. Look at the rider sliding along as he goes into the base of the straw bales. The bike, having hit the curb, has gone upwards, smashed against the wall and dropped back into the road. And these are riders being held at Balabeg and going nowhere. That will be the dust from the fire extinguishers. Road racing is difficult enough in the dry and twice as treacherous in the wet. Here comes a strangely subdued Martin Finnegan. There's Cameron Donald. Oh, down goes Stephen Oakes. The front end just giving away. Watch bike 25 as he touches the brakes. And down he goes. Front end just goes from him. Slides harmlessly along. And our cameraman steps out of the way. Back to Northern Ireland. And whatever you do, don't blink. Thankfully, the rider is OK, but where is the bike? Another popular sport in Northern Ireland is tug-of-war. Here, 11 men just about managed to beat a motorbike. And there's more. As a famous Irishman once said, this is the Tandrigi race meeting where they sometimes like to put obstacles in the middle of the racetrack. The bales were placed there to try and prevent accidents such as that one. <laughs> Staying in Northern Ireland, this is the mid Antrim meeting and a heart stopping moment for 77, Ryan Farquhar. If we look again, Farquhar makes contact with the bike in front of him and yet somehow manages to stay upright. No brakes! I've got no brakes! Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> Staying at mid Antrim and the most innocuous of crashes can leave you hopping mad. Have you heard of the saying, two into one don't go? Well, this is what it means. Two riders going for the same bit of road, and it all ends in tears and a few bruises. If you're going to crash in Northern Ireland, then pick a part where there's no wall or grass bank to hit. Many say that speed is often a factor when you lose control. That's not the case on this occasion. Did you know, cyclists wear anti-gravity boots. Quite often, they just stop working. The anti-gravity boots seem to have a mind of their own. And they appear to have a sense of humour as well. Wouldn't be as fun without the pain. <laughs>the show which does exactly what it says on the side of the dented tin and with plenty more crashes coming up in this part of the show if you've watched crash before then you'll be aware that rally drivers like to crash their cars more than anything else
Just look at the evidence coming up. And you have to admit, we have a fairly damning case. And that's just to get us warmed up. Now the finish line is just around the next corner. I rest my case. Here's David Higgins, and he's about to practice crashing. There's nothing quite like the real thing, and if you haven't quite sussed out what's about to happen... Then you're watching the wrong show. That is three-time British champion, Mark Higgins. Now let's watch that crush again, but from inside the car. Coming around the left-hander, just seemed to get round the bend, then suddenly the front disappeared. I know it sounds weird, but it did, and uh, try to correct it, rattle it down the, the road, and then end up in the ditch and no way getting out. Very lucky it wasn't a bigger crash. My fault, totally. And here's a couple more. Here's David Higgins still practicing his crashes. Back again with David Higgins. And you know what they say practice makes perfect. Another near miss coming up, but nothing will prepare him for what's ahead. Next up, the stuff of nightmares. This tractor is heading along a rally stage, and a car is on its way. We ride with David Higgins, totally unaware that there's another vehicle on the road. As he rounds the bend... All the years ride, never seen anything like it. Came over a flat out crest in fifth gear, and the JCB coming towards with its bucket down and spikes on the front, and it had to swerve down the ditch. Um, almost hit some rocks and things, but then obviously you get back on the road and yes, you lose time avoiding it, but then every crest and every time you can't see over the next bit of thing, you, it just totally unsettles you, so absolutely unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it before. Now we turn to motocross. Waiting for the gate to go, and away we go. A oh, great start by Mike Brown. Gareth Swallow falls alongside so too. Tommy Searle on the inside, but it's going to be Mike Brown who leads. Oh, down goes Tommy Searle. One, two, three bikes are down. Four bikes, man, that's Carl Munns down, so too is Swanapole. Unbelievable, Jamie Law as well on the Suzuki, but they're picking themselves up. Down goes Adam Chatfield, talking of concentration, Jason. He seems all right, though. Yes, he's buried the bike a little bit in the peeling fence in there, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of retrieving, I think, for Adam. Lewis Gregory still holding off the attentions of Mike Brown on the Honda, but down goes Mike Brown. Oh, down goes Christian Watley on the KTM, but he's up and exactly the same place we saw Adam Chatfield go. It's often said the two certainties in life of death and taxes. Well, there's a third, and that's a first corner crash in any motocross race. Oh, bike goes down. Someone has dropped it. That is Martin Barr, so disaster for Martin Barr. Oh, and that is 34 and 24, Sean Simpson and Tom Church. Sean Simpson and Tom Church come together. Well, it looks like a clean kind of start for everyone. Oh, spoke too soon. 
We've all heard of the domino effect. Well, now we're watching it. Remember James Noble? He was the guy on bike 16 who'd only travelled a few yards before crashing his bike. This time, he'd managed a little bit further. Same result, though. Sometimes you can find yourself in a little bit of a tangle. Motocross crashes come in all shapes and sizes. Some of the time they're fairly straightforward and not too painful. Sometimes they're downright embarrassing. Let's dip another toe into the British Rally Championship, and just because you're the best, it doesn't mean you have the right not to crash. This is champion driver Guy Wilkes. He's got to keep repeating that performance. Oh, -ho! didn't take that big a cut on the left. It oh, he's got it wide. One oh, big impact and rain. Then that becomes treacherous. The Darren Gas is really looking cool. Oh! Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Let's take a look at it again. Damn gas down through here. Just carries a bit too much speed. Chucks it in on the left and over she goes. Light roll. Damn gas trying to get back into the fray. Spectators are breaking it. Here is Darren Gas, looking a little bit second-hand. Yeah, oh, no back screen in it, the bumper hanging off, but it's superficial. Fast cars, high speeds, you know what's coming next. The FIA GT Championship is one of the most glamorous series in the world. Ferrari, Aston Martin, Porsche, they all have the right to crash. A lot of the time, the drivers retire due to a harmless spin. And when you consider how expensive these cars are, then that's the way to go. If at first you don't go around the bend, try going through it. The Zolder race track. And thankfully for the driver, another cheap and relatively harmless spin. See, they know it's not wise to crash one of these babies. You'll not only hurt yourself, but possibly your pocket as well. You know they're not going to get that out by themselves. And remember, it's always cheaper to park a Porsche than crash one. There's always someone around to lend a helping hand. And the trick is always keep your distance. made by the Ascari, but uh, taps the uh, 34 car of Fettinodi into the gravel and follows him in himself. So uh, that's not a clever move. That will eliminate those two fairly quickly. Remember the phrase, two into one, don't go. Yet again, the mighty sports car is humbly taken care of by the majestic tractor. What's he trying time. to say there? Was that? To, uh, that yeah, I, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't like to repeat that on a uh, live TV. That's not a good place to do it either, is it? No, no control. Nothing you can do there. With all that power underneath the bonnet, it's not surprising that occasionally it's hard to control. As we see demonstrated time and time again. You can dig yourself into a hole, but sometimes you just can't dig yourself out.
And with that, we say farewell for now, but see you again very, very soon on the next episode of Crash. And Alan McNish is very close to catching up these two cars. And out goes Marco Werner to take the lead of this race. He's got ahead of the Peugeot. Alan McNish is now third in the P1 class. And all of a sudden, the number one car is in contention as we get the green flag. Audi leading Peugeot, leading Audi. Penske Porsche leading the P2 class. And we're on for a dramatic finish to this race. Oh, and we've got a huge crash at turn 12 again. Eight and a half hours in. And that is, that is the 26 car of Montigny, who's been involved with two other cars. One on the right, one on the left, one in the middle. And it was the 46 Flying Lizard Porsche of Patrick Bile that hit the 30 Intersport car. The Intersport car was stopped on track. Pile came around the corner and went straight over the uh, left-hand side of it as it was facing the wrong way around. And then Montigny, here we go then, the Intersport car stopped on track. Pile comes round, has no chance to avoid it hits very hard the front of that prototype and Montigny right in the center of your picture now comes through with one headlight hits the debris and is a complete passenger in that 